This is how the hot dog fairy saved the entire Lehigh Valley. And on Tuesdays in July, hot dogs at Potts were only one dollar. I gotta find out how the hot dog fairy does this. Welcome to Potts. What can I get you? Allentown, Bethlehem, Easton, and sometimes Emmaus. Welcome to the Lehigh Valley with Love Podcast. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to start with that. You're looking at us because this is the first Lehigh Valley with Love podcast television show. Yeah. I don't yeah. know how uh, how we got here. Uh, actually, it's, it's a pretty good, interesting story. I don't think story. it's good for biz with us being our faces on <laughs> being seen. <laughs> we're, we're on TV. Uh, hopefully, you can sit through this episode. We started this podcast in your attic a little over a year ago. We did. I brought this guy from the attic. Um, Tyler told me to bring some things. Uh, yeah, it's like George. Can you can you bring some things from from the old studio, which was your attic, that might uh, make people feel at home? And he brought the smallest item, uh, but it fit in the back. It's a place to start. So we were, we want to thank PBS for um, you know not only g- giving us a show, but giving <laughs> us a chance to to bring the podcast. Um, you know, not to just be a podcast, but there's an important note because the podcast will still be available. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you, for some reason, don't want to watch us, I don't know why you wouldn't. I don't know why you wouldn't want to watch us on TV. But if you don't, then you can still listen to the right. podcast. Radio. So we, we noticed that we got some footing when we brought in an in-studio guest. That's the most popular ones. That was the most fun we had. Basically, when we had to talk less was when we had the most success. Really so we kept that going. We're going to keep the trend going. And we have our first episode on TV with a local... Celebrity guest. Yeah. Uh, this guy, friend of mine from Nazareth, Pennsylvania. He's a third generation IndyCar driver, and it's his 14th season in IndyCar. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Marco Andretti. Yeah, Yay. and the crowd goes. Well, you 14 seasons? That's really? crazy. Because you're younger than me. I'm, you know, I'm 38. 32. 32, oh, 14 seasons? Yeah, it is crazy to think that. How, how is, uh, IndyCar changed over your 14 seasons? Um, that's a good question. I think, honestly, when I look back at, uh, you know, 06, 07, 08, it's my first contract that I signed. I think there's, you're racing the same amount of talent at the front of the field, but there's, I think there's just more of them, mm-hmm. you know? And I think, uh, you know, I think a- any profession, the bar's raised no matter what you're doing, any job. Um, people are just getting better, and yeah. there's, there's more of them. So I think uh, back in the day, there might have been 10, mm-hmm. you know, and you slip up, you're, you're 10th or something. Now you slip up, and you're 24th. Right, you right, know, right. everybody is absolutely um, amazing, and there, the teams as well. People are, you're like, there's not much margin of error, right? Exactly. Like, how do you, like, I, I'm just curious, because obviously you, you come from a racing family. When you were little, did you, was it always like, I'm going to race, or were, you, were there... Did they push you to race, or were you like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do it because I see you guys doing it? Um, that was the initial, you know. I think when I'm really young, you, you know, people ask you, you're playing with Matchbox cars, and you're like, yeah, of course I'm gonna <laughs> drive. But uh, I think you have to, uh, you have to start winning races, and and uh, you have to love it, which I didn't at first because I think I just went into it all wrong, and there's cameras around me, and when you're nine years old, you, you don't understand it. You just want to go drive, and so it was a lot, you know, and I found myself winning races and, and leaving the track and not even smiling, and my dad's actually the one who called me out. He's like, you're not, you know, this... You're racing cars. You gotta be happy. <laughs> exactly, yeah, and you're winning, too, mm-hmm. so it was like, uh, I had to take, I, I took like a half season off to really clear my head and, and reassess my approach, and uh, I had to miss it, I think, you know, and... and uh, Find out if you did miss it. Yeah, yeah. exactly right. Yeah. And so uh, I went to dad, you know, still like try to finish that same season. And he's like, well, you you do it. I'm going to be hands off. Like he, he didn't go to a lot of races even back then. And uh, I think my mom helped me out a lot. And we just went, we, we took her motor home and went, uh, went kart racing, started winning some championships. And then luckily enough, we got some sponsors to uh, keep going up through the ranks. How'd you, and what, uh, so your, your dad now is your... T- the owning of the team you're on. Right. When did you get back into uh, like working for him? When did he step back into? When the did mix? your dad like you again, <laughs> um, <laughs> Marco? You can it depends if I owe him money or not. I don't know. Um, no, I think uh, he was always there. He just yeah. wasn't like because he he's in the the middle. So he w- he went through it where my grandfather is so he's like the most passionate person about this job, and he was so hands on, right? And mm-hmm. and when he's around the, the reigning world champ, the you know Mario Andretti, it brings attention, which brings pressure mm-hmm. and i think dad kind of knew that and so right. he kind of had a 
a better approach with me where he's even though he's my boss um he's extremely supportive he knows what it takes to you know to have a good day and so um i don't know i think he, he has a better approach for sure yeah yeah and then so you've been in indycar for 14 years um and but you you know your dad raced for you as a family you guys have been around this sport and right. nazareth has been a part of you know your life for this time why would you choose to stay here? Because you still live. Because Tyler still lives here. It's me. Oh, I can't. It's, it is. You it can is. live anywhere in the world. I mean, I do have like home's home, and I yeah. do have a lot of awesome friends here. I have friends everywhere, luckily. But uh, it's home's always home. Home's That's the home. answer, you know. And I went to Miami. Well, I, I went to Indy when I signed my contract because you need to be there. You need to know how things work when you get in the professional level of something. And three years there, three years in Miami. Couldn't afford Miami. <laughs> Come hang out back in PA. So. Uh, but no, I mean, I always had something here the whole time, and uh, uh, I, I love it. I love home. Yeah. Well, you uh, were not too far from where, well, we won. I, I'm not going to well, say I won. I was going to say, what is your most memorable it. victory, but I'm going to answer it for you. <laughs> it was at the Steel Stacks Grand Prix yeah. two years ago. We couldn't do it last year. Two years ago. <laughs> I'll tell the story quick. Well, they wouldn't let us back because we bring. <laughs> <laughs> so we had, we uh, if you don't know what the Steel Stacks Grand Prix is, the, the Lehigh Valley Grand Prix is a go kart uh, racing spot in Allentown. They partnered with ArchQuest and they put on a fun, um, you know, go kart race. And then I'm talking with Tyler. He's like, you know, there's a chance Marco might want to want to do it. I'm like, well, we'll keep it open to him. And then that morning, you showed up, and of course everybody there is like freaking out. Kids are like going crazy, <laughs> uh, and we won, and. You know, some small part to Marco, I guess. Um, for <laughs> well, I think I did. Like three I'll laps. give it my my self credit with I, I did the the legwork in the contract negotiation. <laughs> yeah. So what do you, uh, what do we pay? <laughs> uh, well, you guys I, are bad negotiators. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> I don't think uh, you're driving around like Nazareth. Like, do you do you ever? Are you like a, a pull some G force? <laughs> are you like a calm driver, like in, a, in your regular car? I or? have to watch because I might be speeding and not you just feel you're like so I'm speeding. used to it. Yeah, and so uh, like I used to be, you know, faster than than now. Now I'm, you know. Yeah. So what's more stressful? Uh, being in traffic, going two forty at Indy, no. or being stopped on the highway? <laughs> yeah, going ten, your whole life, twenty two. Your whole life must be like when I'm on. Uh, the highway, and then you you get off the exit, and you're like a regular street. And you're like you still want to go that fast. Well, they also in the Indy car, they don't. There's no power steering, right? Yeah, it's it's heavy. So my I have a lawnmower with no power steering, and it's it, you know it could really. It, it, and no motor either. It's one of those by, old. You know, by the end, I don't mow the grass, but <laughs> if I, I just, did, I was it, was, about to say it would be. But so are, is the, the more physical tracks like Indy five, like the the, the ovals, is when you're going faster, right? But um, and you're. Are you you're fighting to turn that car in? Because I, I I talked to somebody that was in a two seater on an oval, and they said that their body it feels like when you go into the turn. Number one, you're looking at what looks like a wall because the banking, and your body is telling you that there's no way this car is gonna stick. Yeah. Stick. Mm-hmm. How long did it take you to just trust that it was it's, gonna? You have a feel. It's it's that under your butt feel to be honest, where uh, you you feel the downforce, you feel the grip. Cause we go so fast and it generates so much downforce with the front and rear wings that you can run inverted. Yeah. You know, upside down. And so, um, you know, the opposite of an airplane, obviously. Mm-hmm. In the month of May, you're 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 doing those things. You're making those changes. You're tweaking the car. And there's times where the car is a little bit probably on edge. And yeah, mostly qualifying. Qualifying. Yeah. Uh, are those the moments where you where you where you earn your money in the month of May? I'd say I'd yeah. say lap three and four of of Indy qualifying because you have to do four laps and the tires degrade throughout the run because we have them so trimmed out because they go faster in a straight line, so it's it's as the battle is try to be flat for four laps as trimmed as you can be with downforce. So the car is sliding and it gets worse every lap. You have to chase the cockpit tools and the wind, and a lot of variables. Well, you're going to Barber this week. You race Thursday uh, at in a, a Alabama. Mm-hmm. Um, the the IndyCar season is pro- is the most diverse, uh, you know, That's racing true. league because you have ovals, you have street courses, and road courses. The difference between road courses and street courses is it's actual streets, right? Yeah, it's actual. Sh- there's a lot less margin for error because there's not a lot of runoff there, so it's just white walls everywhere, mm-hmm. you know, and. Uh, you don't road, have a lot of chances to pass or anything. You do because you know there's uh there's just there's heavy brake zones and so there's there's ways to 
and then there's degradation or long races so the tires go off and if you if you have a better setup you can you know find where somebody's weak ahead of you and and pounce on them but yeah, there's a little more runoff at the at the road courses, but but they're yeah. literally the streets that people walk yeah. and drive on. It's pretty cool. They is that how does like? Well, I, I think they close them off. Well, and then yeah, they, they're not slowing for pedestrians. <laughs> like, guys, we're Mid having race. a race today. Can you imagine <laughs> yeah. they did that here? People, you can't have a the, like the a five k. The law is the law. You, you can't have a five k in Bethlehem without everyone losing their minds because they can't get across town. But isn't like does the but the streets that people use all year long. Does that affect how IndyCar will... Yeah, like every year we do what they call track walks, and the only place I won't is like a place like Barber. Like permanent road courses don't tend to change a lot year to year, but you have weather, you have cars, you have potholes, potholes you have stuff that develop over, you know, so load-in day, which will be like this Thursday, typically we'll have a, a, you know, just a look around the track, see if anything's new from the year before. What what uh, what do you, you like Barber coming up? Yeah, I mean, last year we just missed the fast six. I had um, just uh, a little moment at a turn nine, which was enough to be That's seventh. Yeah, I was seventh, so uh, lost a shot at pole there. But it'd be nice to start in the top six. I haven't even gotten a chance to qualify this year yet, and we're sitting seventh in points. So I'm happy with our race pace. It's just we've had some bad qualifying luck. So I think we need to dig out of that hole. Once we start in the front, I think we'll be you know, forced to. I, see, I'm curious because I don't because I'm kind of out of this world a little bit. Like, do you who do you have any like favorite people that you compete against? Like some drivers. That... Um, I mean, you know, your teammates. I think are are you know you're always somewhat close to them because you work all weekend with mm-hmm. them and and all season long, uh, until the race, obviously. And then you know you still have to look after each other on track, but um, you're still trying to beat each other. In fact, those are your biggest rivals is are your teammates because they're supposedly they're in the same exact equipment. So. <laughs> Um, you have to beat them. And I'm sure. kind of joking about NASCAR, but, I, you know, you see, like, Danica did it and, and whatever. Did you ever think about, like, switching to another league or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, maybe down the road. I'll never say never. Um, you know, I think... I didn't Mark I've, Martin race until he was, like, 80 years old. Yeah, right. <laughs> in NASCAR, yeah. But I think there's a lot of unfinished business right now for me in IndyCar, but you never say never for the future. And it's it's not that easy. You need to have sponsors and It's a, a totally team. new way to drive, too. It's like baseball and basketball yeah. is from what I'm hearing, so... Um, I haven't tested one of those cars yet either. So that'd be wild. When do you think about life after racing, um, and I, mean, I know you, so I know you have some interests, uh, business interests, and you like to keep it in the valley. You like to reinvest back into the uh, the community. If you weren't driving, what do you think you'd be doing right now professionally? I, I enjoy the real estate stuff. It's just uh, I don't know where I get that initial capital from. <laughs> so uh, you George. Know. Yeah, yeah, as maybe a team he can owner. just I, I, give I me mean, money. Yeah, I own, so. I own a uh, Grand Prix team. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. You're retired. Yeah, yeah, you're retired. I got to get yeah. back into it. I, I don't think they're gonna let us. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, if you're watching this Arts Quest, let us have a team. <laughs> That'd be great. What, what I'm is a it? Retired? Man? No, I'm a one <laughs> yeah, done. Win. A, win. Uh, on top. We might have Marco. <laughs> we'll get his dad. I'll I'll drive. Yeah, I'll drive. <laughs> Barber this weekend, right? How how long time wise will that will you be racing? Uh, so ninety laps around there might be. Just around the two hour mark, maybe a little. It depends on caution flags. Uh-huh. And stuff, so, and um, how do you? So, h- how many of those moments are you taking off? Can you take off, or, or you, you got to be locked in? Yeah, I mean, time? maybe under yellow, you catch your breath here uh-huh. and there. But it's it's uh, when you, if you find your mind wandering for a second, it's uh, it's a scare. You have a moment, you almost go off, and it's uh, it's it's an insane level of focus for a long period of time. Mm-hmm. So. Um, I gotta tell my my Mario and Dreddy story. <laughs> okay. I got permission, so I'm good. Oh boy! But we, you guys have you know different properties, whatever. You, you actually you have one by where I grew up, um, in the northern Poconos, and it was like 1996, all this snow, so they closed the roads down, and me and my buddy, believe it or not, we're out. We went out for a run. I do believe it. Yeah, we're out. We're out for a run. We're in the middle of the road because, you know, this, you're not supposed to be driving. Yeah, yeah, or running. So, well, or, or on it. No, you can't drive. You can, you're allowed to go outside. Right, right, right. The, the government's not like, no, you must just question yourself. It's just probably a bad idea. It like, wasn't a great idea. Yeah, right. And then we hear, like, we're running, and we're like, yeah, no one's down the roads. And we hear, like, this rumble, and we're like, oh, man, there must be a car coming. And we turn around, and it's Mario <laughs> driving, like, a van. And we had to jump into the <laughs> snow. And uh, then my, my friend's like, dude, that was Mario. We're like, oh, man, we should have let him hit us. <laughs> and we could have, like, he would have stopped and helped us out or something. But he wouldn't have. Did you? Did you? The feel funny thing I remember, because I remember so distinctly, because he was, um, and I love, like, okay, I don't want him. He to He was mad. under control. He, wasn't he was under, <laughs> yeah, he was fine. But he was also on like one of those bag phones from <laughs> 1996, 
And I he's remember like, that because I'm like, this idiot's in the middle of the street. Don't he's like, hold on. Just, he's like, hold on. He just hit some kid. Like, <laughs> no, but that was, it was just like a funny experience because you see him go on. You're like, that is, no one's ever going to believe me. You said about like you staying in the Lehigh Valley, but so do your mm-hmm. your dad and the rest of your They also stayed Yeah, I mean, too. my dad, you know, when he bought the team in uh, 2010, I actually bought my childhood house from him. And uh, and so we kept kept up being neighbors with my grandfather. So my grandfather and I are here, and um, and my dad had to move to Indy. So, um, yeah, so we're still here. I think people really respect that because, I mean, you, you have friends who, you know, are – I mean, you're a celebrity, but you, you know you have friends. You can live in LA. You could do whatever. I just think it's it's you're right. Like it's really neat that you're sticking around because then it makes people think like maybe Lehigh Valley's not so horrible. Marco well, then then good. like you know you think I'd be in LA or Miami. I actually bought a cabin even more in the middle of yeah, nowhere. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, up, like uh, in, the, head, like in the woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably, exactly. Right but I love spot. it. I love just you know being under the radar and. Uh, you know, like a buddy of mine, like Ice T, told tells us, he says, "I hustle to disappear. Uh-huh. Like, not I don't work hard to be under red carpet and be yeah. in front of everything, and I work hard to to be able to not have to do that." Yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny because my wife is like going through. She follows Ice T's wife Coco, Coco. On, on Instagram. She's like going through Instagram, and I think it, it was like an event that you held at, at your home. And she's like, "Wait a minute, why is Ice T and Coco <laughs> in Nazareth?" Yeah, and then she's like. And it was just funny. It was just like a surreal thing. But that was cool because like he came to Miami at the Homestead race. This was like I want to say 2010, um, and yeah, we became friends just through the sport, which was pretty cool. Because he, I'm a hip hop fan, and he was a race car fan. He's Did you still a car find, fan. Like uh, IndyCar, obviously, it's really is popular. Um, do you find that it's? Have you ever raced like in Europe or anything where it's like over the top crazy? Um, I tested a Formula One car. Yeah. Um, I raced overseas in a lot of different disciplines. Um, is it different? Like, is the fan different? Or is the fan is the f- is is super passionate over yeah. there. Like, they like you know football, oh, yeah. well soccer and and auto racing over there. But I think there, it's like three extremes of. I mean, you could probably ask Fernando Alonso or somebody like like that who's who's done IndyCar and Formula One. It's it's very intense to the point where it's like. It's hard to have a ton of fun, right? Because it's just it's just constant. too serious, and you're not allowed to smile, and you got you know. And then IndyCar, I think, is the perfect middle, and then NASCAR, I think, they're grilling barbecue, yeah. and the race is secondary, <laughs> yeah, and they yeah. have so many races yeah. a year, yeah. and it's so. I've been to like three. I've been to three NASCAR races. Really? How about that? Have In you ever life? been to an IndyCar? I haven't. So, you've been like a a pro athlete for 14 seasons, right? And that was before the social media, like social media. Wasn't as it's true, yeah. part of. We're old, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Jeez, it's crazy. What? When did you? When did that start to be a thing that you knew, like you're gonna have to do in order to, you know, be relevant in uh, in the spotlight and uh, as a pro- professional athlete? I kind of embrace it. You know, I like showing people inside my life, and and uh, you know, I'm not a guy that posts a hundred times a day or anything like that, but I'll do. You know, there's there's some rookies in in uh, the sport. You know, my new teammate for Indy, Connor Daly, he makes fun of me. He says I'm boring, you know, because I post my dogs, my <laughs> wife, and my you know, and that's yeah. that is my life, you know. And so, I might not be at the nightclubs anymore <laughs> like him, but um, that's you know, I like showing fans that for sure. What makes like we're just talking about the athlete thing. I was just thinking about that. Like, can you when you see like a new driver or like a rookie, what can you see from them that you know like that? is a race car driver like is there things that you that's do? a good question and actually that's something that i've been battling with i'd say starting at the end of last year i started to really notice i've had really talented rookie teammates come in and and beat me and you know and i, I was able to do that as a rookie come in and beat some of my idols but there's there's speed in a rookie and i think it's obviously you haven't hit the concrete wall yet so there's speed in that yeah but there's um i think ignorance is bliss in a lot of ways and um you know for one the crashing part but but two I think, you know, at my point, you know, 14 years, which is crazy in, in, in IndyCar, you have a lot of preconceived notions that you develop and you're like even set up stuff and, and your head gets too clouded with stuff, you know, and, or even off track. Am I training too much? Am I not training enough? Am I eating right? You're out of it if you're questioning mm-hmm. yourself already. So, so they just come in and they're like. Because, yeah, and, and same as me as a rookie, like I'm going to win. Yeah, I have everything I need. There's there's nothing else. Right, you yeah. know, and if I ate crappy two days ago, so be it, yeah, like, yeah. or something like that. And so, there, clear mind. Clear That's mind. what it is. And so, that, so and I don't want to. You don't want to bring this up. It's like talking about a no hitter in baseball. But like, ha, so have you it. had some so moments in your fourteen year career where kind of you're like it, it 
put into perspective, like, wow, maybe he's. I think he's asking you, have you ever had a crash? Well, I didn't want to. T- I didn't want to say the word. Oh wait, don't answer that. <laughs> I don't know. Is that like a jinx? You're like not supposed you mean to walk like on the line. Scared? You, you've, had a, you've had a bit, you've had a couple big moments, right? I've, it, yeah, I mean, I've had the, the good Lord with me a bunch of times, mm-hmm. but I think you know the day that that slows you down. Right. I mean, I'll be done. Because I mean, I got. I have no idea. But wouldn't you think like you know if you're going to be a, a driver, like sometime it's going to happen, so you can't let worrying about it. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. you're going to hit the wall for sure. You just, uh, you have to, you know, I'm, I'm very religious and I've become more uh, recently, but I think uh, you just have to let it in, in his hands and, and go, you know, I think um, go do what you love to do. That's what has impressed That's me, funny. being kind of like, not an insider, but seeing the, like, because you get to meet the other drivers and you see that them as people and like, uh, you know, human beings and you see something like this happen and then. These guys get back, or guys and girls get back in the car, whereas the, in my mind, that, I, like, I would never, I couldn't, I don't think I could do it. And you're, I just put myself in their headspace, and then they tall. strap in, and then they yeah. go. It's like, oh, my God. Well, you're too tall to go. Another. We're weird, man. We're <laughs> yeah, definitely weird. I've had friends that, you know, I'm the first one to see them in the hospital after their huge surgeries, and the, their first question is, when can I drive again? They don't yeah. even know what happened in their own crash. Mm-hmm. So, like, when can I drive again? Yeah, it's different. It's it is different. different. Um, but yeah, so I mean, we we, we covered a lot of ground. Well, I'm just saying, like that's because like I get nervous, you know. I, I, that's it's just it, it I was driving. I drove to Shippensburg the other day, horrible place, never go there. And I'm coming back, and I'm like, you know, it's a stressful time driving. <laughs> like, and I'm just in my Kia. Well, that's what's like, cr- I would imagine. Like, you're going 200 <laughs> miles an hour for for two hours well, compared yeah, to so 500 miles is Indy 500, right? Yeah, that's like. Uh, from here to... Oh, we don't have Alexa in here. <laughs> we need yeah. to get a, what if there was just, like, an assistant named Alexa? We should bring... We, you, you know, in, I have an Alexa in, in our works. other studio. <laughs> and actually, in every room. And when we don't know the answer to something, we'll ask, like, and also Alexa 500 miles from here. 500 like, miles, I, like, that would be... Uh, no, it's no, got to be, be farther than that. It's got to be, like, Maine. I think it would be to Indy. How far is Indy? About 600, yeah. Almost so Indy. So, you basically... It's to Indiana, probably. Yeah, you drive to Indiana in... How long does the Indy 500 take? Without yellows, it would probably be two hours, 45 minutes, <laughs> something like that. But, yeah, we're over three hours at most. That's crazy. What do you think with IndyCar? I mean, you said you've been doing it for 14 years, and you have new blood coming in. Um, like, what do you see the future of the sport, I mean, in, in on, on the national scale? Like, um, do you see it getting more popular? Or? Yeah, I was joking. It's When you think about it, it's kind of true. Like, this, uh, this sport, when I retire... I would have driven in the worst part of it because I think we're on a total upswing right now because when I joined, it was right after the split of IndyCar and IRL. Yeah. And, and, and I can relate because as a, as a hockey fan, I used to be a diehard hockey fan. I used to play ice hockey. They had a strike, and I just stopped watching. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And so I, I, can, you know, I can sympathize with, with the fans on that one, especially when there's two different series that do the same thing. Right. So really, we had to go through that whole you know, down thing when when NASCAR is up, and I think uh, I think we've been on a huge upswing ever since. And so, when I retire, it would have been I drove my whole career. And <laughs> yeah. this was fun about like a NASCAR or like a race like that because you said about grilling and go. It's like an event. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. obviously an event, but you know what I mean. It's like you're not just going there like a a basketball game. You're in and out. Like it's all day long. Uh-huh. You know, For but sure. that's the difference like between NASCAR and IndyCar. I think because NASCAR, it's almost like well, IndyCar is like the, the those are long the, races. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like the like the background noise. Like you're there for the grilling. Yeah. But you're also it's like base taking part of it. But they, the Indy car, they wear their leather jackets yeah. in 95 <laughs> yeah. degree weather. Yeah, right. In the off season, you'll be you'll you'll spend most of your time back here or up at, at your uh, cabin. Um, what are some of the places that you like to go in the area that are like staples in your like like restaurants or like where do you like to go? Like what 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 does somebody that drives around a track at 250 miles an hour do? For fun Man. to unwind. A big yeah, night for me anymore is a late dinner somewhere. <laughs> so like Netflix. Y- yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. We Bethlehem. I love the the town. I love the area. There's a lot of great restaurants there. Um, I find myself going out less and less, even to dinner. Like I used to make fun of my dad. Like, oh, you just what are you doing? You just hang out. Like when you, we work so hard that when we come home, we don't want to do anything. Yeah. Like even people, you know, friends will be like, let's go on vacation. That means I gotta go to another airport. I don't, yeah. I don't want to have to do that. Like so, my vacation is home, and uh, and I love it. Yeah, and I would go to the cabin, but uh, you know, I like if I had to like name one, I'd say Apollo Grill. Yeah, um, there you go. Yeah, a- Apollo. 
We'll Thank stick you. to Bethlehem, but there's a lot yeah. of good ones in, uh, you know, over by the promenade as well. Do you, do you uh, shout out for Apollo? Yeah. Do you, oh, have, um, do you feel the, the, the <laughs> free appetizer? <laughs> the Lehigh Valley does a good job supporting Mar- you and, like, uh, especially like when you're at Pocono, do you see a lot of, of the fans come out from here? Yeah, yeah, I feel that. I, I just think, uh, you know, I think we might, I don't know, hopefully we can keep that race going. I don't know. We have to put on a good show this year. Well, in, in general, do you, do you get, get a lot of interaction, like, on social media from people saying, hey, I'm from, you know, Bethlehem or I'm from. I've Pop- had people, like, in autograph lines. In Ohio, like really? from here, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people that really even travel the circuit with us, which is cool. So yeah. Do you avoid um, going out to restaurants sometimes because of this thing that happened <laughs> at a parking garage? That was uh, that was. I don't want to say the single worst day of my life, but that was the top five. <laughs> I, I, well, you, you know this? You that, tell, I, I mean, I know the story, but I I don't know if I know it. That as was well. like the worst morning I've ever had. Like, yeah. So, I, to, I, for people who don't know, you you went. Out and then I literally they were had try- dinner coming with... out of a parking garage and it would the the thing wouldn't come up so you you moved it right no I didn't even oh, move okay. it so I had dinner with my grandfather we're at uh, Edge or something like that and we just try to I try to leave the parking garage and none of my cards work I'm like okay and it's which literally... was a thing that happened when they first I- I- installed the that the credit card thing none of it worked <laughs> yeah well the best <laughs> of parking authority yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. not going there I'm just <laughs> saying like I I couldn't get out uh-huh. of the place and. Uh, can you imagine how long 40 minutes is? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, just, so I'm just there, and I got people, eight people behind me. So this guy, four cars back, just decides to run and just he's had break. Oh, really? yeah, he's like, he's just had enough, because 40 minutes, yeah. you know. So he breaks the gate. I leave cash. We all leave. And they get my vanity MA yeah. license plate, which now I don't, I don't have vanity <laughs> plates anymore. And on the Not thing, and now. then, like, the next morning, I'm like, charge with theft and like all this stuff and like i can't even imagine like the damages that, that could have caused but right. um but honestly like looking at it if you don't know me you're probably like probably probably did it yeah, you know? yeah. and it the was the race like, car drive well i think that's what it was people you know they're like well, they yeah, also wanted he's a to well they, yeah but i mean like i was born learning to take care of the name that's just what yeah. i do and it's, it's and so that, know, all that was cleared so, up Pretty. It is, but then they're probably like, "Well, his family cleared it up for him." It's, oh. It was just—it was a really bad look. Did and you have to like call sponsors and everything. I had to—I I had yeah, to assess not. the damages because that could have been horrible. And uh, thank God, I mean, I, I called the Snapple guys and everything. I said, "This is what you're gonna read, man. Like, this mm-hmm. is what happened. This is what you're gonna read." And uh, I wonder what that guy's doing—the guy who who ran through it. <laughs> I want, if that's you, yeah, he, he just can't. Yeah. I want right to have you on. I want to know. Yeah, but even that, like, how like, do we leave? Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. like, we you have just to just... sleep there? Yeah, then? I don't know. Until... So, uh, yeah, I mean, I called the sponsor, and I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to have a job because of this. Like, And uh, yeah. and so I, I call, and he goes, you waited 40 minutes? <laughs> he goes, I'd have been out of there. Like, and I'm like, oh, okay. So, so once I made that phone call, yeah, it was a little yeah. better, but um, it was a uh, like, I'm never going to downtown morning. Bethlehem ever again. Yeah, like I just Good went job, to dinner. Guys. I'm going to park on the street from now on. <laughs> yeah, so. that was a tough one for sure. I, I, th- I think we're, we're about Oh, we're going to end on that? That's we're about to end No, it, um... <laughs> He's just going to uh, make some. <laughs> well, no, what we want to do, because we want to get you cheap again for the next yeah, yeah, Grand yeah. Prix. So we're yeah, just we gonna, we're trying to tarnish your image so we that will you'll pay, beg us to be on We our, will pay all of your parking team. tabs for too soon. <laughs> to, to, so when does the, the season go until? Uh, we're it, done, like, mid end of September. So you're, like, all, all summer. Yeah, all summer long, yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, we wish you luck. Marco, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me, man. Good luck this weekend, and uh, I'll see you around up at the pool. <laughs> Probably. <yeah. laughs> and thank you guys for tuning in. And remember, it's uh, we're still gonna have the podcast, uh, the regular podcast, or just go to, just look up the Lehigh Valley with Love podcast. Yeah. we're pretty easy. Way to, to really find sell it, it there, George. <laughs> if you want to listen, to it. <laughs> but no, we're really that. excited. We we uh, we have a bunch of shows. We have some really fun guests, and we want thank you so much for being thank our you, first. Our yeah, first I'm guest. honored. It's thank awesome. you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for watching the Lehigh Valley with Love podcast, filmed at the PPL Media and Education Center at PBS 39.